Hello. Hello, Jabal. Yes, you are. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, <clears throat> about the Italian documents, we try to go through it or, or talk or discuss about what what the, what's the challenge for the week we, in our group last night. And uh, in my understanding, there are four parts. The first one is uh, we, are, we are going to provide the, the data from the 25 uh, Telegram channels, public Telegram channels, and we're going to first explore the data prepare for the, and prepare it for the fine tuning. Uh, purpose. The second part is selecting the uh, open source LLM model and try to fine tune it for Amharic language. And the third part is building Amharic RAD, RAD generator uh, that will generate ads for Telegram based on the uh, given context. The fourth, the fourth one is if you can deploy the rag and simply front it. Uh, that's what I'm, I understand about the project and, and the, the whole project. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Elias. Our uh, technical tutors are also on the call, so they'll just make sure to give you some feedbacks or comments uh, on your uh, understanding. And I think uh, Yababal will also join us maybe a bit late, but we can just move forward until then. So next we have Kerot. Kerot, uh, you can speak up. And for the rest of you, if you want to speak up, please make sure to raise your hands uh, so that we can prioritize you. So Kerot, you can speak up. Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, so uh, me, me, me and my team met up la la last night and uh, tried to decide on a model. And so we, we have been doing uh, our own research on the given model basis. And uh, so far, we have come up some, with some potential models that we can work on. So we are just waiting for the, for the computational. OK, so uh, are there any uh, 10 academic teams, the technical teams here? So we have a yes, question. We we have MT on and also Rahmat on the call. And uh, if you have another question also for Yabbaban, he will join us in maybe in 10 minutes. So, yeah. Okay, so uh, we can skip in 10 minutes, or uh, if they can ask, uh, answer that, that the, what is a given co competitional uh, capability that we are going to be given? If they have any information about that, that would be helpful. Okay, MT and Ramet, can you take on this question? Or? Uh, I uh, I'm not quite sure, but uh, so um, Rahmat, do you know? Um, I'm not I'm not sure about the details about this. Uh, but uh, what I'm sure about that you're going to be given a, a, like um, uh, you don't have to worry. You're going to be given like a, an appropriate uh, uh, like computational uh, capabilities, so you'll be able to. To carry on any kind of uh, fine tuning, um, um, I mean, fine tuning, uh, like uh, um, e like e the fine tuning you need for this project, basically. You don't have to worry about that. I don't know why you are asking, really, but um, why are you asking about the like the capabilities? Uh, because they are uh, the, the given are so some of them need more competition than the others so we needed to know about the competition and capability yeah of course choosing. yes yes of course and what you're going to have is is going to be like um, enough for uh, like handling um um how to say like um, as well not not necessarily small but i mean uh um uh, like a model like a 7, 7B Lama or like Mestral or stuff like that, a model like this. And you um, uh, should be able to like fine tune just fine uh, on those. Um, of course, everything depends on the size of the model and like the um, uh, how you're going to carry the like uh, the fine tuning on the or like are you going to do like like complete uh, fine tuning or just uh, 
there are these uh, like um maybe yesterday we didn't discuss this but uh, like there is a document in the challenge document you can see that there are also uh, these um uh pa parameter efficient uh, fine tuning uh, so and there is like um, quantization and um, this uh, uh, method that are uh, like uh, reduce for you the memory uh, requirement and uh, like computational requirement to do your fine tuning uh, like using adapters and stuff so uh, there are like uh, things that you can apply to to be able to like uh, to efficiently utilize whatever computational and memory RAM RAM um, abilities you have so um i mean uh, uh like uh, maybe you'll see on that on the upcoming tutorials but you can also read uh on the com uh, like a uh, current document that you can follow these uh, um resources and you can see that uh, how these uh, different methods are can be utilized does that answer your question um Okay, yeah. So we did read on the modules, the desired documentation of the modules. So they do differ on their uh, need of computational uh, capacity. So yeah, uh, I think if you say it, uh, all are enough. So I mean, uh, uh, so I'm not. I don't know what you which which model exactly you're talking about and which uh, like uh, resource are you following exactly. Um, but I'm saying that uh, there are like maybe maybe they are like uh, uh, it might happen that maybe you're following a, a resource that is fine tuning like a big uh, model, let's say uh, Llama 30, 13 or 70 B, and then you have to like uh, maybe you have to choose like a different model. Um, anyway, you have to like uh, there are a couple of suggestions for what you have to use because you have to use. Uh, in the end, you have to use something, some model that is capable of, of um, embedding uh, um, Amharic language. So um, so there are Mistral, I think, and there are a couple of others. Yeah, Lama 27B. Yeah, this is like what's, um, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't remember like the, all the models that were, I think there are like a couple of uh, Lama 27B that were, uh, yeah, so I, I was just talking about like uh, from like, uh, of course, you can fine tune whatever like model you want, but there are like uh, not every um, not every model can handle Amharic. So maybe yesterday we just talk about uh, like tokenization and embedding a little bit um, in, in, the, in the LLM tutorial. Uh, so you have to to choose because you are going only going to to do like an instruction fine tuning, for example. That's what you're going to do. So in instruction fine tuning itself, you don't need to like uh, retrain the whole model. You're just going to maybe take a few layers um, and um, uh, freeze the whole the rest of the of the of the model. You're going to freeze the embedding. You're not going to retrain the embedding. Um, and then then what you what you what you need the computational uh, requirement for you is going to be less um yeah i'm sorry but yeah. yeah so yeah. like exactly as you said so i know like like we are, we're not going to train the whole thing because it's too expensive and com computational uh, yeah. it needs a lot, a lot of competition we, we, that, so we are going to transfer training from the english la language to our language by fine fine tun tuning it or preparing it right so it says so on, on the document but my question is since uh, like they vary like right so like the parameters var vary for for the llama two and open llama, the falcon they have seven billion parameters and the others like have le less than that so uh, from our research that we found out that uh, uh, not all uh, models need the same uh, amount of com computational uh, capacity right so right. I was just I was just trying to find out what is the uh, minimum or the maximum uh, computational capability that oh, oh. is going to be assigned. Okay, I, I so I don't know about I don't know about this. Yeah, I think about you have the values yeah, on the on the call. Yes, yeah, so maybe he can answer that because I don't okay. I don't okay. actually know I, the I like specific. Okay. So, Thank I, you. Thank sorry, you. I I missed it. So maybe can you rephrase the question? I just joined late. 
Mubarak. Yeah. 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 So good morning. Uh, yeah. 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 So I was just asking because like la last night we were just trying uh, to uh, choose the module that we are going to be doing our pre-training, our, our fine tuning, and we wanted to know the computational that's going to be uh, assigned to us. The computational, the GPU me memorial capacity that's going to be. De definitely, you, you are not going to be choosing anything above 7B. So, and we will provide that would be that you can fix because there will be like we try we will try to assign two GPUs per per group, uh, and they will have um, between let's say less than twenty four G, and mostly most likely it's going to be sixteen G, and that you can fit um, with those two either through parallelism you can you can fit any model, uh, whether it's Llama or uh, Mistral, and the other ones, I mean, so the only one that I don't know might, might be my tech is Falcon, but Falcon is also, I think, can fit the seven B can fit in 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 the memory that will will provide, and yeah, and the others like mean, yeah yeah so yeah it's so definitely it's not laser. Yeah, yeah. So, so that that was what I was trying to know. Yeah. Okay. So I think whatever we listed there, you can choose them and they will work, right? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. So the intensive ones were like Lama to and Falcon with 16 G GB of a, a maximum memory. So if we, we can do, and, and do that. Because you're going, we, ask, we, we hope that you will work on parallelism as well, just a part of it. So then if you have two 16, then you can do a lot. Yeah. So thank you. Um, <laughs> OK, great. Uh, next, we have, if you have any questions, please make sure to raise it now also, uh, even if you're not on that list. Okay, next we have Magdes. Magdes, you can speak up. Okay. Uh, I think Magdes is not able to speak. Then, Fanuel, can you go next? Yeah. Hi. Hi, brothers. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. OK. Uh, so uh, what I understand from the project in our last next discussion with my team is, so the first thing we're going to do is pick a model that to work on. And after uh, the processors or GPUs are provided for us, we're going to fine tune them with the data provided and extra data if we have some. And after that, I think we're going to publish it back to Hugging Face, and we're going to use that model as an input or as a model for our RAG system. And we're going to prompt it to provide us with a, you know, a suitable ad according to some channel or some data that we give it as a context. That's what I understand from it. Uh, so the question that I, we have about that is uh, the processors or the GPUs were supposed to be provided to us by yesterday night right so how's that going or would that affect uh, our progress in that sense i, I think uh, it's in in principle like task one and task two they don't require much uh gpu at least or the one we provide so yes we were late just because uh some of the plan didn't work like we wanted on google cloud and the google cloud machines uh, were basically and they didn't offer GPUs because they are all occupied. Many people are still using them. So then we are going to switch to AWS, just the usual, um, because this time we thought we will simplify by providing a from collab that you can access it. Uh, that would have been that would have said. So then now we would ask you to generate actually private keys, uh, private and public keys, and you share with us the the public key so that you can SSH directly to the machine. And that way you can work, you know, we'll do just a quick tutorial there um, and should be ready soon. And I think that was just the set one, but yeah, it should not affect <clears throat> at least the trial part. I mean, the understanding the reading <clears throat> and then testing hugging face in your local machine should be fine. And you could also use Colab with GPU just for, I mean, the GPU they provide there is smaller, but at least it's um it's something you could start if um if you are progressing okay so like this 
small GPUs, we can try it. I mean, that's yeah. not part of it, at least. I think exactly. The hugging face, the most important part is understanding the different elements in the hugging face. For example, you know, you could use BERT, train BERT, just in the same way that you would uh, train, uh, you'd fine tune. So as long as you have a clarity, like that your team has well prepared uh, how to use, uh, how to pull model, how to push model, how to you know, infer from the model, how to uh, examine the model, then, and how to prepare the data, then I think, you know, the other parts should be, I mean, it, sh it should not be a setback, uh, even if we didn't provide, as we said yesterday night. Okay. So our other question was like, I think you said something about one group should work in one model and nobody else can choose that. So how do we do that? Like, is there, we should make a choice about the model now, or we should just start working on something and, you know? No, I, think, I think I'm just, just checking uh, if there are already selected ones. I'm, I'm not sure, so it's not updated maybe. Um, I think there is um, only the group traces, right? The provided document. There is no, no problem for model choice. I think there is, like, I mean, unless uh, we are, it's, it's maybe, I think the, the charging document is there only. I don't think on, we can on the, that. Ah, okay. Yeah. I think that's where we need to change. Or okay, so where 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 are you editing? We, we pro they were provided with uh, another document for group choices. Yes, maybe we can add yes. another column for this one. Yeah, exactly. Because in the challenge document, uh, there is a model selection column. So, yeah, yeah. In the yeah. challenge document, there is. A... Okay. Yeah, so, but it's read only. Oh yeah, I understand. Okay, so I, I, I didn't know that. Okay, so maybe uh, can you choose? Uh, can you add one column, Rodas or whoever is? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, and just basically because that's where I wanted to see like how. So in a way that that is synchronizing it. It's not a necessity that it's not a must, but I would really like to see difference. But if two people choose the same, uh, if two groups choose the same model, it's also fine. It's much more of two. You know, when you blog, you blog differently, and then we have also, as a collective, we gathered much more understanding, like you know what works. So, in a way, that's my the only thinking. It's not for any other thing. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Great. Uh, next, we have Mubarak Abdul Hamid and then Iqbal. Mubarak, you can speak up. Hello, guys. Hi, I'm back. Uh, uh, my question is, uh, uh, can we choose a fine-tuned version of uh, uh, LAMAS or LLMs yeah. like uh, for uh, Zagari logistic one? Yeah, we, can we can use that? Yeah, you can. Yeah. Okay. So uh, even it's recommended. You could, you should try that one first and see, see how much it works, right? The infer and then uh, the baseline, you know, it's like in the baseline, you can just go from just uh, uh, hugging face chats. You can try it in any way. And then you can try the one that, um, you know, from Gary. And then you can try to fine tune that, that one from Gary. And you have to understand what they did so that. So the only challenge that you would have for it, I mean, for that one, I think they didn't, I don't think they did it with instructions. So they did it probably with. So you have to distinguish between instruction versus uh, base models. So instruction ones are fine-tuned such that they are much more suitable for fine -tuned, uh, for instruction. Now, when you try to train them for something else, it might not be compatible. But as long as it's trained or fine-tuned to um, you know, for just understanding the language or answering some of the targets that you have, which is basically generating text uh, and uh, I think embedding, uh, so not embedding, it's another one, but as long as it is not in conflict with what you are trying to do, it's fine. Yeah, uh, but if we choose the fine-tuned ones, like what will be the purpose of uh, this project? Maybe the focus of... Uh, no, no, ah, so I thought you want right. to refine tune. you want to do double fine tune. Uh, so if we do double fine tune, maybe. Um, so I mean, the, 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 we, we know we know that it will be good. Uh, 
you know, we know Gary's model doesn't generate what we want. So I think for me, clearly, I can tell you one thing. It's like there isn't anyone that you will generate what we want now. The, the wow. business objective. So you you know, you could just use open AI and you would be fine um, sometimes, but it's not the point. Yeah, from uh, like what I guess, uh, if it has some uh, Amharic capability, if we fine tune uh, it, maybe it will give us a, bet a better uh, yeah. result from others. That's why I guess. It is tr trying. I mean, so the choice they made might not be suitable for you. So in a way, you know, it's, it's about really, in this case, it's first is learning component, right? How to fine tune, but more than that is how to be smart and do achieve it you know, almost always if you learn now the literature review there is there are a couple of trends one of the trend is that quality data gives you even with a smaller amount of data it gives you a good output yeah and yeah. the other one is uh, you know uh, quality model right which has already how it's fine tuned so for example mistral is currently performing better um, and and for different reasons than Falcon, for example, was really doing well for a different reason. Falcon was much more quality data. They optimized more on the quality data component and Mistral now on as well, just on mixed language. So they really had balanced language and, um, and things like that. So it's about understanding and then trying to come up with a strategy how to you know, get a good result, as well as also narrate your problem. So for example, in this case, what you want is probably a smaller, it, we're not trying to create a general model that does for everyone in law and other stuff. It's much more on creating short sentences for advertisement. So can you do something better? There is the, the question. It's like, it's about answering the business objective. I think every, every time I wanna stress is that almost always in everything you do make sure you have the business objective in in your you know always with you it is the most important part like you at all costs try to address the business objective if you solve the business objective you're great right so it's not about you know being general it's about being specific and answering the question like answering the business objective and if you can you know fine tune for a model that can generate quality add texts, then you have achieved. Even if it's not good at writing poem, you know, that's fine. Yeah, I understand. For And uh, for the Mistral case, uh, from my research, it is not fully open source, especially the large model, maybe it is. Yeah, I think the 7B probably should be fine. Many people fine tuned. Okay, good, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so then we have Abdul Hamid, right? Yes, correct. Yeah. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Am I good? Yeah, you are. All right. So Mubarak asked one of the questions that I was going to ask. So I'll move on to the other questions. So uh, according to the Gary Logistics article I was reading, they were first trying to uh, expand the pre-training uh, phase by uh, by collecting uh, additional Amharic data and then allowing the model to predict what the next word is going to be so my question is are we going to be using the telegram data for the pre-training session or for the fine-tuning one that's my first question I, I think they didn't do that it's just you mean by they expanded the vocabulary right by the tokenization uh yeah first they uh they continued the pre-training phase so that the language can predict the correct yeah, but but uh, that's still fine-tuning right it's basically that they it changed them because the tokenization is the key component. So the tokenization gives you vocabulary list, right? Mm -hmm. And the vocabulary list of the original Lama was very basically they demonstrated in that article that it's basically for Amharic, it's character by character. The same is for Chinese and yes. that's not good. And therefore they needed to change the um, vocabulary. So they did that basically based on uh, some three billion tokens and, and stuff and that basically allows them to to do tokenization differently and then they fine-tune on the data so it's yes exactly so you are gonna also on the base model you're gonna fine-tune it so 
you're going to probably do two fine tunes. The first fine tune is usually to increase, even from their model, you can start and then you can fine tune the last layer such that it gives you a better Amharic context understanding. And then, um, so in my opinion, I think based on the model that they showed, it's probably now okay, like the Gari model to compare to, for example, the original Lama 2. Uh, because I have to, I mean, we have tested it somehow, and the best that was giving, like GPT-4, really is good um, to give you a, a sensible Amharic. And then after that was some fine-tuned version of Mistral. It's called Noise. Um, I think it's Noise Hermes uh, Mistral. That is again in in. It's a it's it's a like the eight times seven B Mistral. That is much more you can't do that because the eight times seven b means it has a mixed um uh what's called um uh, mixed agents or like mixed uh, components so each of the eight models uh, are seven b and and that means in total they actually have about 47 billion parameters which cannot fit in in resources we give you so those ones also perform well but not Lama 2 in like if you just go and try Lama 2 in Hugging Face, uh, it it knows the characters, whatever, but it doesn't, it really has a lot of nonsense works. While GPT-4 almost always gives you a good, um, I mean, a word that makes sense. Maybe the same things might not make sense, but the word makes sense. And it also understands your conversations. Now, the Gary model seems to have that as well at least from one example they, that they have showed that they, it can generate something sensible now maybe the you know when you taste it you might try you might find a good way now how to fine tune okay the, it maybe the base model is good now you might be just only fine tuning that with the telegram data for um like much more generating something sensible for art or you might say okay no it's actually we, we should improve also the base model itself such that it actually generates first uh, sense because it might be whatever they showed maybe is not you know a selected component uh, if you try something else maybe it doesn't work so it's it's about tuning getting the idea you know what it is you know is their current model sufficient for your you know for you to consider it as just okay this is a good base model i'm just going to do it i fine tune it only for my you know generating um and or that i have to do so you have to calibrate that one i don't know if, if i answer the, your question but yeah yeah okay. so what i'm getting from this is there will be another data that's that will be used for generating ads no, i think it's that so we will try to we are working with you as i said and sometimes we are late as well um we will try to select some of the ads from you know the the telegram data we gave you is a lot more it's a combination of ads and non ads now we have to classify the ads from non ads and then you can use um those ones to actually just train only the ads only and then that means you know that it actually knows how to more how to generate those type of data so for example whatever they trained in um uh, Gary, it probably has seen much more from, I think they, they have said it, from Bible, from, you know, like religious texts and, and news articles. So if you fine tune it, this one, so fine tune, you have to understand, sometimes you, you, you are resetting the weight. So when you are resetting the weight sometimes, or when you, when you are adding extra parameters, it, it has the same effect. So you are actually, the last layer really is what or the last layer or the additional parameters are what actually generates the final answer so by even if you are fine tuning with a smaller data let's say 15000 you know ads it might be really good at understanding ads than for example the original model which is much more religious text so it's it's selecting the ads from the telegram data that we gave you and then fine tune with them and its structure it knows better okay so the telegram data would be useful for both fine-tuning uh for ads and also for generating uh amari content 
right? Yeah, yeah. So in principle, you could, yeah, you could, yeah, exactly for for the pre-training, continuing the pre-training, or like let's call it just the base model fine tuning, you could use everything. Pose, you know, the telegram data, which is add as well as then add. Now on the actual fine tuning, you might really just restrict it to just the add components only. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Please. Okay. Uh, we'll I think it's Yvonne, you. then Rudolf, like then we, we can we can come back. So Yvonne is next and then we can come to you. Okay. Uh, thank you. So hello everyone. I wanted to present the progress for our group. All my questions have been answered. Uh, so far we met in our group and we discussed, uh, we actually discussed through chat, we discussed the project itself. We kind of like broke it down. And yeah, we were still discussing and we were seeing, we were talking about one problem, one question we had was about GPUs and computation. We were thinking of using Collab, but you have answered about GPU. Another question was about models and also understanding the data because some of us do not understand Amharic, but we found a member in our group who understands Amharic. So yeah, so far that's what we are doing. Yes, thank you. Great, yeah. I think, uh, yeah, it's good that some, there is someone that understands Amharic, even if it is still, you know, Unicode something, but it's important to see the quality sometimes quickly. And another aspect that you could use is just Google Translate. Up. Most of the time, it you know it gives you the English. If it makes sense, then the Amharic also somehow makes sense, All right? So if you know for quick quick ones, just you could do some some of that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. And I think there's another one even maybe listen. So I'm not just sure. I'm just gonna check. This uh, on Harik, so which is sometimes actually it says it's better than uh, actually Google. Yeah, and so let this one is the one. So you could uh, just to check the quality, the Sun AI would give you also just a, 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 an understanding. Okay. Okay. Thank okay. you, sir. Okay. Uh, Rudolf. Hey, good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. I hope you guys are very well. So, uh, my question was regarding the uh, the question Abdul was asking. Uh, as we know that tokenization is the key key uh, a crucial step to transfer uh, learning uh, when we it comes to uh, and them. So that uh, logistic has already done the uh, with the uh, uh, American language. So if you want to use a logistic model and function uh, that we we we, we uh, is like a, we won't do the first step, which is the tokenization. So. Uh, it will reduce of fine So I wanted to to make sure that it is uh, it is the case. This is my my question first. It's slightly breaking, and therefore I didn't understand much. So oh, you, okay. You uh, about tokenization. Yeah. 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 We, we yeah we know when we it comes to a low resource languages like. Uh, Amharic and other languages in Africa. When we want to to transfer the learning from LLM to those languages, we need to tokenize those languages. Basically, we need to find the correct tokenizer for those languages. So, yeah. with the Gary logistic model, it have already done. So, my question is to know while using Gary logistic, uh, logistic model, we will just focus on fine tuning. So we, uh, we won't experience uh, that step uh, that is a tokenization. Yeah, 
that, that's true. So if you are using that, probably you might, unless you, you know, you want to try some other tokenizer. Yes, you and and this afternoon, uh, uh, Nat Nile would give you that basically what they did in a tutorial on what they did at Gary. So they basically, you know, how to tokenize based on, for example, you could just use exactly what they used and uh, generate that tokenize, you know, like that vocabulary list. And that there will be a tutorial. But yeah, if you use that and you are happy with what they did, most likely it's fine what they did. Uh, then you don't have to do that. You don't have to add another tokenizer, just you can use their, basically the tokenizer is really, you know, the model that just takes whenever you give it an input, how to break it into tokens. Right, so tokens yes. are the the component, right? So, and that is basically the dictionary. We like in this sense, it's a dictionary. So, if you have in a dictionary, what do you do? You normally you would look a word in a dictionary, and so it's exactly it's doing that. So, um, the Gary Logistics probably have a better dictionary. Uh, they de demonstrated it, and the same technique in the tutorial will give you. Um, and if you use that model, you don't have to, but if you are using another model then you should probably follow the same step um, uh, or find another tokenizer that is good and train it and trying maybe you know they did the tokenizer is called bnb uh, which is bytes uh, in encoding or bytes in order something um and the, the uh, and then there is another one uh which is called like actually the within the algorithm that they were using there is ngram type um, you could also try that one, but I mean, I would say like that's don't bother about that for now, unless if you are using Gary, just you can keep the tokenizer there. Okay, good, uh, good, good, Yaliba. Thank you. And uh, I, as you were saying, they, I think they use a sentence piece as a um, tokenizer from Google. Yeah. Okay, great. So uh, most of the people who spoke on the stand up are from group one, group three, and uh, group four. So if you could just, if you could have some people from group two, five, and six, maybe it could be a question or just so that we can have some you know, temperature check if you can speak up. Group two, group two are Mela, Tabdun Hamid, Yaya, Meron, Red, Date, Macbeth. Okay, Abraham, please speak up. Uh, good morning, guys. Good morning. So yeah, so, so yesterday uh, we did we didn't uh, get the time to uh, uh, review the challenge documents before uh, Yabbal yeah, session, and I think uh, we didn't get most of the things that Yabbal said. And yesterday, most of our teammates we spend a lot of time, you know, trying to understand the challenge documents and review. Uh, uh, uh the, the review that some of the resources and uh, we're uh, a bit confused how uh, the the workflow is going to be uh, and maybe uh now uh, we got a good understanding of the challenge document you know it would be nice uh, if you have to give us a, a little push just like uh, he did last time you, you, you know, that would be question. helpful i mean normally i would work based on like you know people ask questions and then I would answer because it's it, it makes a lot more sense. If I say still, I, it's going to be my perspective. But if you ask, if you guys ask me some question, uh, what you understood, what I don't understand, and whatever I know, I mean, of course, on the challenge document, what our goal, I know exactly, uh, and other things like so. Maybe just phrase it with question, and this is usually a, a better version in every other aspect of it. So what are the key parts that you would like to understand what are the things that are not that confuse you so this morning session was this um so we'll close this one just so that we have a uh, the stand up is separated from the other uh, tutorial but the tutorial in this uh, the morning will be actually a lot more on uh, q a so that means whatever you don't understand we, let's just discuss so that you have a very very clear understanding now that you have looked at the challenge document so yeah, if you have question, you can ask them now, or you can ask them later. Maybe just weekly, because Maybe. after this, there is going to be a Q and A. Think about the questions. Your group should reflect on questions and ask them. 
Sure. Okay. Just a simple one. Maybe yeah. uh, if you just tell me what the output of this project, the, the final goal of this project, maybe if yeah. we just start from that, you know, yeah. we would. I think the business objective, right? Parts. The business yes. objective is given a brief, a brief means sometimes uh, what is uh, the campaign information is encoded there. So I have, uh, I want to, you know, my target group are young people between age 20 and 30 and uh, who are actually football fans. Uh, and uh, I want to run it for a couple of days. You know, these are the kind of, and, you know, I want to reach a you know, thousand people or a demography of this location in Addis Ababa. So this is called a brief, basically describes what the campaign wants to achieve or its target. And then on the product information, the product information means that I am advertising, you know, uh, and latest, um technology I'm, as electronics that are i brought just you know some sets of electronics that that are more of uh of kitchen equipments you know these things and in particular i want to advertise for this one is just uh, some grinder you know that grinds like some uh components and um it's it has the latest whatever whatever did it did it this is the product information. The other one is a brief or, you know, and if you want, you can also add a, a brand information. So for example, oh, it's I'm uh, advertising Philips or I'm a brand called in Ethiopia, just some ABC brand. Um, and then using that and the LLM now, or based from your prompts, that's the rag component of it, it will generate an ad that is suitable and that probably maximizes, let's say, uh, interest. So it could be like, you know, pure uh, touch. So in Amharic, this would solve your problem. You know, Philips is the whatever, whatever, and then just generates that. So you specify probably in not more than 50, 50 tokens or uh, 100 characters, and then you get that thing. So that's, that's the goal. So the only thing right now you could do that with OpenAI, but just the quality is not good. So you are trying to increase the quality of that generated, um, that generated ad, as well as also the embedding, for example, in uh, OpenAI might not be good to do RAG in Amharic, uh, using your Amharic texts and documents. So you are trying to basically get a good result there. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does, it does. Okay. And so that's the goal yes okay so uh, i see a lot of people have selected a model you know and i i i, I, a bit, a bit, uh, I get a bit confused you know what parameter should i consider you know in selecting the models so mostly just you know what all of them that we gave for example are very popular right so llama has is the most popular open llama is also popular and um, mistral is very popular falcon is popular so you could really, in part, just say, uh, I am like, based on your research and based on your interest, like based on others, you know, and you can, for example, the very small, the latest model uh, from uh, Stable AI, you could choose that one because it has a smaller model and you wanted to see how much you can find it. But the smaller model usually means also has some issues, but maybe just in your case, what you are trying to do is what other people didn't do. And so I would say that the, it's not, it's normally not clear where do you start. I start based on which model has already a good Amharic content or which makes sense, right? So they actually have a better represent in that case. Then I know that they, they, they have more data, Amharic data than the others. So if you look, if you just compare it, that's why the second task is to compare you know, just uh, these different models by just loading them into your GPU, infer from them and see which ones are reasonable. But that one, you don't have now GPU, but not when you have a GPU, you can also test that one. But for now, I would say it's more of arbitrary uh, choice because we already chose for you, like these are okay to try. So I would say just whatever you feel good, whether you want to, to use the latest one from Stable AI or Falcon, which used to be the very good one um, because it has quality data, or Llama, which is very popular, or Mistral, which is now number one mostly in other areas. So it's uh, whichever you choose, you will not get wrong. 
Thank you. Thank you. Okay, great. So time is running short. Just a quick uh, question. If you could, just a quick request, if you could just highlight the team lead's uh, name so that we know who to contact. And also when you're creating a group on Slack, please make sure to include our team also so that we just get to see also. So yeah, I think that's all. Uh, th thank you all so much. Our next session will be starting in five minutes. So yeah. Thanks. Thanks everyone. Thank you everyone.